Good afternoon and welcome to another session of ENG4E. That's Workplace English Grade 12, uh, Term 2A, brought to you by WASA Distance Education Center. I'm your instructor, Mike Laverty, and today's date is Monday, March 27th, 2023. We are on class number 24 of a 34 class chorus. So we will meet together 34 times for this particular course. And so we've got 11, including today. So we're on the final uh, final third uh, of classes to go. And we're, we're working our way through the key questions in Unit 4, which is, of course, the final unit in, in this class, in this course. So we've got key question 39, and today we're looking at resumes. So uh, creating a resume, drafting it up, looking at some templates. Key question 40, if memory serves me correctly, is the job interview. So, so in tomorrow's class, we'll be we'll be discussing job interviews, getting ready for for an interview, some some pre-planning, you know, doing some practice, even if you're not even doing an interview, just practicing some questions that you can that you can answer. And then we will jump into the culminating assignment from this unit. So we are in week seven of term two A. There are nine weeks in total. So we have seven, eight, and nine, and then you will write the, and then it'll be time to write your final exam. Please keep in mind uh, June 15th, 2023, that's your graduation date, which is fast approaching. I mentioned this deadline so you can have a an honest look at your at your workload, what you have left to do, you know, it's it's really important to start doing that this time of the year. If you haven't started on, if you haven't started any of the assignments, for example, like in this in this course or another course you may be taking with WASA Distance Education Center, you know, now is the time to to sort of um, get down to it, plan out those next assignments. There is definitely enough time to finish one course. If you're thinking about completing two choruses, that's where you got to have a real honest discussion with yourself and I think probably best case scenario with a guidance counselor working at WASA Distance Education Center. So so just think about it, you know, it's you know springs in the air where we're thinking about new beginnings and uh, you know all all that great stuff and summer's coming. But, you know, that, that June 15th deadline, once that date comes and goes, you're going to have to wait until uh, next school year to, to finish off that credit. So last week, week six, we talked about unit four, and then we'll probably need most of week seven as well. So week six and seven to finish off unit four. And as I mentioned last week, I would like to go back to our novel, Where the Rivers Meet, because we we did have a chance to talk about it in depth, but you know, looking back, I I think we need to talk about it a little more. So you know, week eight and nine, we'll we'll talk about the novel, and then we'll also talk about the final exam, and the final exam will also feature questions about the novel, right? So. Um, any time we can spend talking about where the rivers meet is is useful. So thank you for tuning in. ENG4E broadcasts every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from one, uh, sorry, two o'clock to two fifty p.m. Central Standard Time. You can phone in. Uh, so thanks for listening on ninety one point nine FM or Bell Express View Channel nine seventy two. You can phone into the studio at 1-807-737-4017. You can phone us toll-free at 1-800-465-7144. And you can also go to Zoom. 
So zoom.us. Once you have the Zoom application open, you can click on the Join button, and you can enter in our meeting ID, which is 417-6699-799. So that, again, our meeting ID is 417-6699-9799. Sorry, 417-6699-799. And all that information is in your course handout. It uh, can be found um, by contacting WASA. If you can't watch and listen live, you can always go to my YouTube channel. Just search for Laverty WASA. You will find all my videos there, and they're organized into playlists, right? So you can simply go to playlists and go to ENG4E. Please contact me directly through email. That's mlaverty, M-L-A-V-E-R-T-Y at N-N-E-C, schools.org. Find me on Facebook. Send me a message on Messenger. Look for me. That's Laverty Wassa. If you want a phone, you can phone the Wassa office at 1-807-737-1488. I'm at extension 2211. If you're not sure who to talk to, just uh, dial zero, and the receptionist will guide you to the right person. You can also phone us toll-free at 1-800-667-3703. And before we jump into today's lesson, just a friendly reminder that, you know, it now is the time to submit your work to, to myself or any other teachers you may have at WASA right now. You know, just send out a batch of assignments, get the process started, and that's and that's all you can really do, right? Especially if you're having a hard time getting started, you're not sure where to take your assignments, you're either confused by the way they're written um, or the way it's laid out in the textbook, so don't feel alone. Yeah, a lot of people have that same issue. They've expressed that same problem to me. They just have a hard time getting started, so... Some of, some of the best conversations I've had with students is just that initial conversation, just getting them on the, on the right path, getting them started. You'll feel a lot better once you've got one assignment done. And just, and just keep in mind that you've got to pace yourself, right? So we have, you know, we've got from now until June 15th, a little, little less than two months. But if you start handing in the assignments now and start getting feedback on your work, it's going to be better for you, your teacher, for everybody involved, right? So just keeping that June 15th deadline firmly in our minds. So today's lesson, we're going to look at the images of the day. So I, I pulled up some comics about resumes. Uh, key question 39, developing my resume. So we're going to look at key question 39. Your learning goals are to analyze a resume and review its format. So, you know, one of our favorite words in this course, the format. How is the information organized? And resumes have a very, um, I guess, rigid. It, it is very rigid. It's a very um, firm format, which, which is good. Um, you know, w it, it's always a good thing, right? It's like it, it's good to have a pattern and a template just to put your work into. So today we're going to look at the particular formatting of resumes, how they're actually laid out on the page, and and then you can start thinking about your resume and how you're going to format it and what you're going to put in your resume. So your learning goals are to analyze a resume and review its format and to take notes while watching a live demonstration on formatting a resume. So I'll do a live demonstration um, with a Word document open on my on my computer, and we'll just look at some of the elements of it, um, some things to avoid, some things to focus on. And your success criteria are is 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 one one sorry one criteria, and that is to begin drafting up your own resume, so or drafting a rough copy of your resume because. Key question 39 asks you to complete a, a rough copy of the assignment, and then you're also going to complete a, a final version. And I, I think that writing a rough copy of anything before you 
produce the final version to be shared is always a good practice. It's hard to think of situations where it wouldn't be. And when you're writing a resume, it's you know very important that you take the time to proofread it and have somebody else look at it, go over it. Um, they can point out mistakes that, that you can't see. And, and this is what happens with writing projects and any kind of create, creative project or anything that you work on by yourself. You just inevitably, you start to miss the mistakes and your brain starts to fill in blanks. So that, that's what our brain is really good at doing. We, you know, we know what's there and we know our life story and we know the skills we have and we know we're good people and we know that people should hire us, but other people don't know that. They don't necessarily know that we're how hard workers we are. and They don't necessarily know our skills, right? And it's our job to tell them that. The same goes for fiction writing. You know, the, the story might be clear in your head or, you know, like a painter, they may have a very good idea of what they want to paint, but it's you know it's it's in, it's in the it's in the delivery that um, you know that the, the the true vision of of what they want to say comes out right. All right, so we'll look at some. So on Mondays, I like to put up some images that are related to what we're talking about. I. I do my best to try and find ones that are humorous, so it's hopefully have a good little laugh here, but like all jokes, they contain a grain of truth or, you know, like a whole uh, gold mine of truth, depending on how the joke is delivered. So the first panel says, isn't Dunder Mifflin the fictitious business from The Office? And to which the applicant replies, yeah, I watch a lot of TV. Not really a lesson to be learned there. I just love the office. Um, the second one, it says on your resume that you're a prefectionist. So the the person has misspelled the word perfectionist, uh, thereby proving they are not a perfectionist. Otherwise, they would have caught that mistake. Um, hard, to, hard to catch mistakes when they're just like two letters uh, transposed, just two letters in the wrong spot, but uh, it happens all the time, right? So that's... That kind of thing is avoided when someone else reads your resume. The third panel, um, you've got s uh, a man pointing to his resume saying, don't call that company. They might not give me a good reference right now, which I, <laughs> I love that one. That's pretty funny. But, you know, it, it, we'll talk about this in a second. You know, listing employers on your resume, you know, you, you have to list employers that are going to give you a good reference. And, um, yeah, more on that. As we look at resumes, you know, you 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 either you're, you're sort of faced with a difficult situation because if you've got or if you've got an employer and things didn't end well, you can either not put the information on your resume, in which there's going to be a gap in time. So you don't want to have gaps in your resume, right? You don't want to have you know, you know, the entire year of 2018 where you have nothing listed right because the the person who's hiring you is probably going to ask you what happened in that time so it's it's probably best if you're just honest about it list the employer you don't have to list them as a reference but you know it if if it is relevant to work experience you probably should put it in there but more on that as we as we get closer the last two jokes cartoons read um this is a very impressive resume did you pad it yourself <laughs> So um, padding is, is, a, is a resume practice that we want to avoid, of course. So padding your resume is adding additional information. And that additional information may be completely untrue. You, you could just put information in there to make yourself look good. Or what, what I think is probably more common when people pad their resume is they might stretch the truth a little bit and they might make themselves seem like they took on more responsibilities than they really did. And with all these things, it's, you know, it's, it's a cost-benefit analysis. And it should go without saying that, you know, honesty uh, is, is a virtue. It's a grandfather teaching. We, sh we should strive to be honest with people in our lives. And we shouldn't uh, mislead people on our resume. 
and you know the benefit of it is you, you might get a job you might get away with it but the the cost of it is is just too great um even just the cost for your own integrity right just so you don't want to you don't want to line your resume um and you don't want to stretch the truth you want to you want to stay within the bounds of what you actually did and you know and just just believe in your abilities and believe in your uh ability to adapt and learn and to and to kind of and to get the job you want and and you and you're going to get that through honesty and integrity second one on this page is your resume is certainly memorable you use a different font for every word you wrote so that's kind of funny so and that just speaks to people sometimes put a little bit more work than they need to into how the resume looks in terms of adding like fancy colors and illustrations and little things on the side so people have different opinions on this i'm definitely of the opinion of you know focusing on a a very simple resume format we you know whenever possible just simply having words on the page you might want to put like a like a a bar or like some kind of like a, a horizontal line to separate sections of your resume but really all you really need is words on the page and we're going we're going to talk about uh typography a little bit and and that's just simply using bolded words and making some of our words bigger so we've got to use some visual strategies to to make certain parts of our resume stand out it can't just be a whole bunch of words all in the same font all in the same size right because that's that's kind of boring and 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 not as useful right so we'll we'll talk about typography and how we can make our writing stand out but we we just we sh we should be striving for simplicity right someone should be able to just pick up your resume and know who you are and what you're doing right off the bat all right so now i'm just going to i'm just going to read directly from your unit 4 handout so we don't miss any of the required elements of this assignment so as mentioned briefly in the section letter of application cover letter a resume is normally sent with a letter of application, cover letter, to employers in response to more permanent types of jobs that generally pay higher salaries and for which more qualifications are required. As a much more formal channel of communication as compared to a completed application form, it is a very important aspect of any effective job search. So last week we talked about uh, the job application form and we we looked at a job position that was offered by the Sulacout First Nations Health Authority and and, th and and this is a real job posting for anybody out there who was looking for a job so they were they were posting for dietary aids so uh, cooks and cleaners and prep cooks and dishwashers and that kind of thing to to work at the hostel and to prepare meals for the for the residents and maybe the staff I'm not entirely sure um, but so they had a, a job application form where you'd fill in your basic info but then at the bottom of the form they asked you to upload your resume and your cover letter so you have to have those things done and if you're going on a job hunt it, it's good to have your resume and your cover letter uh, ready to go and have them saved in in a folder on your desktop or saved in a Google Drive account or saved somewhere that you can easily reference them and update them as you need to so typically your resume is gonna stay the same and you're gonna update the the cover letter for the job and the cover letter is gonna be sp very specific to that job whereas the resume is probably gonna stay the same but you might change it depending on where you apply to. So your task with the assignment is to develop a chronological resume of your own using the template provided. So 
I'm I'm going to provide you with it with a with a template in my slides, and it's very similar to the one you find in your in your handout. Now, note if you already have a resume done, perhaps from an earlier chorus, or you just you just have a current resume, then for sure you can use it. Uh, take a close look at it, revise it as you need to, especially if you haven't used it for a while and you have something new that you can now add to it, some new work experience, right? So. So as you progress in life, progress professionally, your resume becomes, you know, it, it, it tells the story of who you are professionally. It also tells the story of who you are outside of your profession by listing your interests and, and things like that. But the, the bulk of it is, you know, who you are as a professional, who you are in the workplace. So the template, when you finish it, will be your rough copy you are then to revise and edit that rough copy as needed and then you're to produce a final copy on a computer. Remember that your resume is used to show an employer that you are the best person for the job so it has to be as professional looking as possible and include all your qualifications and positive characteristics. You want to make the greatest impression possible. Right, so we so we want to we want to make sure we don't forget anything. We want to have all the most important details uh, listed in this document so you know and and that then that's what a resume is and all employers um, well I guess you know I guess the employers with any amount of sense know this when they look at somebody's resume they know they're getting um, a very one-sided perspective on who somebody is you know, of course, people only put the good stuff in their resume. They don't put the bad stuffs about them in the resume. Um, so it, it's it's understood, though, and employers know that you're selling yourself. You're trying to convince someone they should hire you. Now, just a note on that: when we do talk about the interview questions, um, that's the time when you can talk about the negative aspects of yourself. And speaking from experience, you know from when I was a manager and I would create job postings and I would advertise them and I would uh, see who applied for the job and then pick my, well, I'm, I didn't pick my favorite candidates, but I picked the ones that I thought were going to do the best job and then I'd pull them in for an interview. And I always, I always found it fascinating to listen to people talk about their, their weaknesses because that, that is, uh, it's hard to do. Um, it, it's especially hard to do if you're talking to a person who can give you a job and you and you really want that job but i i think it's a really good reflection on who you are as a person if you can talk about your mistakes and you can talk about areas in your life that you could do better at and how you're working to improve yourself and you know just seeing your impact on other people right because i think that's kind of like you know a big red flag with some people is they don't understand the impact they have on others. Um, so any any kind of awareness of that you can show is awesome. But that's for the interview. For the resume, you are simply creating the greatest impression of yourself possible. Now before we look at the uh, various aspects of a, of a resume, it's good to talk about the three main distinctions, the the, the three basic categories of a resume so you have the one that you're working on now is the chronological and so you know chronos or chrono means time uh, you know l logical just means you know the the way of doing something so if something is done chronologically it's done according to time in this case is the most recent positions are listed first this is the resume that's most common and preferred by employers, right? So, so with the chronological resume, your work experience is the number one thing you're communicating. That's your focus. You list it first. After you list uh, your name and your objective, you list your chronological work experience. So most, com most recent first and the least recent after that. Functional, a so a functional or a skills-based resume, this is where your skills are featured, right? So um, 
you know, typically when you have a gap in your employment history, so if you've been out of work for a little while or there's something happening in your employment history, and in this case, you, you, you're trying to emphasize your skills and you may talk about your experience in different jobs, but really you're emphasizing the, the particular skill set that you have. And then we have the combination resume, which is sort of a mix of these two. But for, for the purposes of our course, we will just focus on the chronological. And just keep that in mind that when it comes to listing your work experience, you are listing it in the most recent first and then the uh, least recent after that. So there are seven main components of the, of the resume. We've got your name and your address. So that's, you know, your, your contact information. You have got your, your objective. So what, what you're trying to achieve by, you know, um, and it, it just answers the question of why you're applying for the job. That, um, your objective should be pretty clear to anyone who's read your cover letter, but it, it's good to have it stated in the in the resume as well your cover letter and your resume should probably be sent they're usually sent out together and they're usually read together but you know just in case they get separated along the way you want both of them to be strong and to speak for who you are so you give us your name and your address you give us your objective you talk about your education so your formal training in in whatever field you're you're in and if you know you, you just list whatever education you have right so um and it, it's also a, a good idea to list any education that you're working towards so for example let's say you know um you don't have your ontario secondary school diploma but you're working towards it you can include that in your education section so you can say you know uh, you know, five credits away from graduating, currently working towards this. And that and that's really that's a really great detail to include. Employers like to see people who are developing themselves professionally, people who are learning new things, people who are pushing themselves, right? They want to see you as a someone who's learning and, and growing. That's the kind of people who tend to get hired. Uh work experience, um, so actually, just realizing I made a mistake there, so we should probably, we should swap these two. Uh, we're going to talk about our work experience right after the objective, and then we'll talk about our education. Both are important, but with a chronological resume, it's work experience first and then education. Then you list your skills then you list your interests, and then you put down some professional references. At least one. All right. So let's um, have a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put up a resume uh, section by section, and then we can just talk about each one and just some things to keep in mind as you as you go through. So. So up here we've got a potential job candidate. So Sherry Campbell is has produced her resume. And so this is the first part of the resume. This is the first part that the employer will see and it's the it's the first part that you that you format. So it, you simply put your name and your address, right? And you don't uh s same discussion we had over the cover letter if you're applying for the job electronically, digitally, they they don't necessarily need your full mailing address. If you're dropping off a hard copy of your of your resume, then you should include your physical like if you actually are mailing someone a resume or you're dropping off a physical resume to them, then I would recommend you include your full address, so your name your your street address, your full mailing address, and then also list your telephone number and your email. And as I mentioned last week, it goes without saying, but 
just make sure that these numbers work. Make sure it's a telephone number that you can answer. Hopefully it's got voicemail, right? So if, if you leave somebody a voicemail, sorry, if you leave somebody a phone number, that number should have a voicemail feature attached to it. So if they, if they phone you and you don't pick it up, they should be able to leave you a message. Um, and, you sh and then you should be checking that message constantly. Same goes for the email, right? Double check that email, triple check that email, make sure you've written it down, right? I I if you're emailing your directly, uh, sorry, if you're emailing your resume directly, no problem. Y you can't mess that one up. But if you're, if you're leaving a physical piece of paper, double check it, triple check it, make sure you've got that, that email address done and, and, and correctly. Sorry, and, and inputted very correctly. And you notice here we can choose two different kinds of formatting. Same with the cover letter. We can go all the way to the left or we can center it. And, you know, just pick whatever one looks good to you. I prefer to have it centered or left justified, but whatever looks good to you. Just, you know, just we're just keeping things simple here. Your objective. This is a short statement that explains why you are applying for this job. And so this person said, to apply my skills in a community-based organization committed to the well-being of young people. So you can use bold, underline, or a larger size font for your heading. So, and, and that's my heading right here. And the headings are... They are dividing the resume into parts, you know, into into or into sections, right? And if you just go, you know, if you just go bold and a larger size, that 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 should be enough to make it stand out and make it as easy as possible for your reader. And when we're when we're when we're thinking about our our resumes this is a writing exercise where thinking about your audience is so important right because who is your audience in this case your audience is the person who's going to decide if you get an interview or not right so if if you haven't thought about your your reader if you haven't even thought about the person who's going to pick this thing up and look at it then uh, there's a good chance y it might get ignored or it might get you put in the in the in the maybe or the or the no pile right so you want to avoid that and think about your audience think about how they're gonna read this thing also the the objective keyword is short right it's it's a very short statement uh one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so this is like a twelve fourteen word statement right very short all right, now we get into our experience, so our your prior work experience. So I would use the same format for, for the heading as you use for the objective, right? Um, so you want to you wanna use the, the, same, the same formatting. So again, you've got your heading. So you put your heading in there, and then you put a, um, just like Taylor Swift, you put a blank space in there. So the word experience, um, you could put work experience. Um, sometimes the word experience is, is fine, especially in a resume, it's understood. Um, so the word experience, um, you know, it, it's bold. You might want to do the two things, make it bold, give it a larger, uh, larger font size. And then, so what you do is y then you list the, the date that you worked. So in this case, it's January to August 2022, Youth Worker, Pelican High Peak Healing Lodge. Planned activities for clients and supervise them on field trips. So what you do is you list when you work there. You list your job title. Uh, you list the place of employment and your main duties. And so, you know, I if you, for example, I if you still work there, then you would put present, right? So January, 
it would be January 2022 to the present, right? You would put that here, right? But uh, if, if you haven't worked there, then you don't put anything. So it's uh, month and year are, are fine here. You, you typically only need to put the year down, um, and, but then you might want to put the month if it's straddling like two years. Um, so the year, you have to put the year. And if it's your most recent job, you should probably specify the month you started and if you're still working there. So it should say present or something like that if you're still working there. So it's, it's the time frame, when you worked there, then, you, uh, then, then a period, then you put your job, where the job was, and what you did. Now, you don't have to put it in italics, but you, you can if you want. So you see for this, an example, the... All of this stuff here, that's the, the um, put the main duties in italics. And that's to separate it, right? And a lot of people, when they, when they write their resume, they, they don't say, I planned activities for clients and I supervised them. It's, it's sort of like a point form writing where the I is assumed. So you just simply say, planned activities for clients and supervise them on field trips. So most most jobs you work at, I there's going to be more than one main duty, right? Like, so e even the most simple job is going to have several, um, you know, main responsibilities. When you list them here, you know, I would just pick the, the two most important ones or the most important thing you did when you worked there. Maybe one, two, three at the most things you did. As long as you can express them in a very short sentence, right? You don't have to go into detail. You don't have to off you don't have to offer an elaborate um, discussion on what you did in that job. I, if the person is interested, they will call you for an interview, and then during the interview is the time when you can go into detail and explain what it is you did in this job. But on the resume, you know if. This this is what uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine. So if you can do it in ten to fifteen words, uh, aim for that. You don't want to have too much detail on on the on the resume. Just find out the important things you did and list them there. Same goes for the education. It, it, it's very similar to how we formatted the experience. So it's it's. Uh, list the year you graduated or you received your certification so you just list the year when you when you did that schooling or the date you graduated then you list um, what you got so in this case 2022 what the person received was their Ontario Secondary School Diploma and who gave it to them is the Birch Island Distance Education Center so the year you got the education what you got, right, and then where you got it. And so that, that's very important information for your employer, right? And if, you, I, if you're working towards it, then you could, you could put a brief little note in there, right? So you, you could say, um, you know, you could just say, you know, like working towards or, you know, two credits remain, right? Because you don't want to leave that information out. You, you want to get it in there somehow. Let the employer know that you're working on something, even if you're not done yet. Under skills, uh, this individual is listed organization, mentorship, leadership. Now, th this, this is a good time to talk about padding the resume. When, when, you, when you emphasize your skills to an employer... Now, again, people, people might have different opinions on this, but I, I would say that less is more, right? And, and this is where you want to list, you know, three, you know, three or five essential skills that you can do. And maybe go for the three, right? I, I would lean more towards this direction. So I know there's lots of talented people out there, but I I think if you're really honest with yourself when you, when you apply for a job, there's probably two or three skills that like really come to mind 
And these are the three skills that you're going to talk about in the interview and maybe even your cover letter. So just pick three skills that you have that you're really good at it and include them there. Interests, these are just to make you seem more human. If, if they're relevant to the application, include them. But don't be afraid to include stuff that's not directly relevant to the job posting. Right? People just want to hear that you're a human being. And I know personally that I loved reading about people's interests on their, on their job applications. So just, just tell us what you're into. And again, don't list 12 things. You know, list, list, three, list three to five. You know, um, you know, three probably best. Less is more. References. So I think it, it's always best to to give give somebody an actual reference that they can phone and and they can do it right now. So keep in mind that you have to apply or sorry ask for, 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 for permission. So make sure the person you're talking to knows that you're using them as a reference. Once you have their permission, double and triple check their contact information. Tell them, you know, when you ask permission, say, hey, I'd like to use you as a reference. What's the best way for them to contact you? They'll, they'll let you know that. So you might just include a phone number. You might just include an email. You may include both, right? But it's always best to list someone there. And then, and so that's it for that. And then what I wanted to do was I wanted to, again, just, bring your attention to indeed.com. I think indeed.com is a great website. They have a paid model where you can sign up for an account and you can pay them money and they will uh, provide you with like more job postings and they have lots of services available. But the stuff that I'm showing you is, is, is free and you don't need to pay for it. So what I'm going to do is with, with our last seven and a half minutes or so is we're going to look at one of their articles, how to make a comprehensive resume with examples. And that's from Indeed.com. So if I can remember that. So how to make a comprehensive resume, Indeed.com. How to make a comprehensive resume with examples. Okay. Let's make sure I'm sharing that. All right. Updated February 28th, 2023. So very new. So I'll read a bit from their website. A resume is a document commonly used in the hiring process. It includes information about your background and qualifications and should communicate the most important, relevant information about you to employers in a clear, easy-to-read format. The goal is to quickly communicate why you are uniquely qualified for the position based on your skills and experiences. All right, so if we go down here, and then see the, the, they got a little plug here. So Indeed.com has free and paid resume review services, right? So I, w I would look into that. There may be a way that you can have someone look at your resume without paying for it. Wouldn't that be amazing, right? So... Um, they break down the the key components of the resume, which we have done today. Uh, how to create a professional resume, and then they they talk about the the chronological resume. So that's the one that we just looked at. They're using the word summary. Um, so you can a summary I is similar to an objective. But there, there's a critical distinction there where if you list an objective uh, on your resume, then the objective has to be something that you're trying to achieve, right? Like a an objective is securing full-time work in a youth counseling field, right? It, it's, a, it's a specific goal that you can get. A summary I is who you are. So in this case, Jeanette Chobot is a exceptionally organized and friendly dental assistant with three and a half years, three plus years experience, successful ex experience working with dental offices and clients. All right, so let's go all the way down to the bottom here where they have 
they have an example, right? So that's the combination resume. So I don't want that. What I want is the Let's see here. Ah, there we go. Let's look off. Let's take a look at our templates here. Ah, and we even have them by um, office assistant, data analysis, so receptionist. Okay, well let's have a look at uh, receptionist. there we go so we've got and they've got the format they've got sample one and sample two so ebony more all right so so in this situation you you've got a couple of options you can copy and paste that into a word document you could type it out or so you physically write it onto a piece of paper copy the format I'm, I'm gonna copy and paste it and open up my Word document here. So when you find the template online, you know you've got to you got to take it, but then you also got to find you know uh, a way to use that formatting. So I if you're using Microsoft Word. Just note that there is a oh uh, th there's a way you can copy and paste things. So I'm I'm gonna copy this text, and when I go to my Word document, I am going to hmm. something's going nutty with my format here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna right click, and we have keep source formatting. I have merge formatting, and I have keep the text only. And when I keep the text only, it, it's actually not that bad. Uh, let's see here what happens. So, oh, it's trying to, there. Oops. So I've got my summary. I'm not sure what happened there. Let's go home. And I'm going to paste that and what I'm doing here is I am I'm taking these headings and I'm making a summary I've got education I've got experience and so what you'll do is you'll just you know enter those in and you, you want to make sure that the formatting is, is consistent so I've bolded my headings I put them on a size 14 font. See, and it's already starting to come together. And I've got my skills. This employer has listed their typing skills. So 80 words per minute. They've listed some specific programs they're, they're familiar with. And so, you know, my myself personally, if I was editing this uh, this resume, I I would look at the skills section, and I would I would say something like typing, and then in brackets, you know, 80, 80 words eighty words per minute. Let's see, we've got digital communication. Uh, you might want to also call this, let's see, software proficiency. Something like that. And and that and that's sort of like borderline uh resume padding, but you know, you, you want you want to give yourself some you know, some 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 good some good uh compliments and you want to sell yourself, right? So saying you know, don't don't tell someone you're good at software. Tell them you have software proficiency, right? Or you you know how to communicate digitally, right? Um, 
and let's just see um, this one we could say information communications ICT right technology something like that and, th and then and then a description of how you're good at that at that particular at that particular job okay so that is um, where I'm going to leave things today I'm gonna I'm gonna save this document to my desktop and we can I think I think before we start tomorrow's class we will have a final look at this thing and try to try to clean it up a little bit try to try to jazz the formatting up a little bit but I think that's a a good spot to to leave it for now you know I've got the template from the from the LinkedIn website I've copied and pasted the skills and I'm gonna maybe tomorrow's class we'll spend 10 minutes just trying to make trying to make my example look a little bit like like their example so play around with some formatting make the uh, make some of the documents stand out or some of some of the formatting stand out so our employer can s easily see the important stuff in my resume okay uh, that's it for today Thank